And I invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Numbers. The 13th chapter. This morning we have gathered for an historic event. Forest Christian Church is celebrating its 50th anniversary and certainly this is not 50 years of being in one building. It is 50 years of understanding that church is more than a building. Church is more than just bricks and mortar and steel. A church is people. People who are joined together in fellowship with each other in service to the Lord Jesus Christ, bonded together with a common faith. What we celebrate today is that 50 years ago in 1958, a small group of believers came together and started a church on the north side of Jacksonville. They came together to worship. They came together to fellowship. They came together to minister and to study as one body. And in doing so, they produced not just a fellowship, but... A family, a group of people who are very much brothers and sisters in Christ. This family lives on today as some members have moved on, some have went to be with the Lord and new ones have come, yet the family still remains. And this morning I want to bring a message that I hope will highlight the past and the future of Forest Christian Church. To show us what God has done and show us what God can do through us, provided we are steadfast in our faithfulness to Him. With that, we will now read together Numbers 13 and verse 30. Just as introduction, let us stand and read this verse together. It says in Numbers 13 and verse 30, But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Let us pray together. Father God, these words that Caleb uttered so many years ago should be the battle cry for every generation, for every church. And today as we study this entire passage and focus keenly on the words that we have just heard, I pray that you would open up my heart to preach the truth, hold my tongue from preaching error, and open up the ears and the minds and the heart of the listeners that they may receive the Word of God and that the Word may change the heart. As we know this, Lord, that if worship and study of the Word does not change us, we are not truly worshiping or studying the Word. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Every graduate of Sunday school is familiar, at least somewhat, of the story of the Exodus. The people of Israel were in bondage in Egypt under the Pharaoh who was making their lives unbearable. In response, they prayed out to God for relief. And in response to their prayers, God sent them a deliverer, a man by the name of Moses. And in a valiant cry before the Pharaoh, Moses said, Let my people go. And Pharaoh, of course, refused to acquiesce to Moses' demands. But this was no obstacle for God. Though the Pharaoh said no, God would see it through. God sent one plague, then another, then another until he had sent ten plagues to show Pharaoh that his power was limited, but God's power was infinite. 
After a bitter time, seeing plague after plague, Pharaoh finally reluctantly submitted to the demands of Moses and he let the people go free. And afterwards, even after ten plagues and the loss of his child, afterwards, Pharaoh still changed his mind and sent his army after the people to bring them back. And the fleeing Israelites are are going along and they come to the Red Sea. It seemed like an insurmountable obstacle. But again, it was no obstacle for God. God simply reached down with an unseen hand and held back the waters of the sea on both sides so that the Bible says that the waters stood as a heap on the right and on the left and allowed the Israelites to cross over on dry ground. Then the Israelites went into the wilderness and they cried out in hunger. Some even longed for the days of Egypt. And they said, we're starving Yet again, this was no obstacle for God. He provided manna from heaven to give His people the food they needed to eat. Later, the Israelites would cry out in thirst. Did you bring us in the wilderness simply so that we would dry up and die? They asked Moses. And God Gave them water from a rock. Last place you'd go looking for water. Because no obstacle, no obstacle was ever a match for God. Every obstacle that would come, God overcame it. And the key up to this point that God was trying to show the people and that Moses wanted to get across to the people is that no obstacle that would come would ever be a match for God. Thus we come to our passage for today. The people of of Israel had been in the wilderness for about one year. God promised them through the lips of Moses a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses had been their deliverer in Egypt. Moses had parted the Red Sea through God's power. Moses had called down the manna from heaven through God's power. Moses was the, was the man who brought water from the rock through God's power. Moses was a man who time after time after time showed God was with him. Now he was calling the people, get ready for your ultimate destiny. God has prepared a land flowing with milk and honey, and it's for you. All you have to do is go get it. All you have to do is be willing to receive it. Go get that gift. And sadly, the people weren't ready. And Moses commissioned a band of spies to go before the people to see what the land looked like and to bring back a report about this land God had promised. So Moses chooses one man from every tribe. There were 12 tribes. Some who went saw the obstacles of the land as insurmountable. But two, two of them, Joshua and Caleb, saw the obstacles as insignificant. You see the difference? Ten of them saw the obstacles as insurmountable, but two saw them as insignificant. I want to read the chapter together. I've told you that just as an introduction. Let's actually read the text starting in verse 1. Chapter 13, verse 1. 